Okay. Welcome back to the big boy. So sometimes you get ideas, you get thinking about things and you gotta explore. And then you go to lay stuff out on the board and you go, hey, why don't I do something different? Because who knows how long this particular exploration might last. And let's put it on the magnet board. And then you realize that you really need to put all the magnets together and uh, it becomes a project all of a sudden. And I mean a really <laughs> long three, four day project. The reason why I set up uh, Tunisia or Tunisia uh, 2 is that I am um, expecting and hoping that I will receive some other games uh, in the near future. And I want to keep the table space clear, but I'm curious about this game. And, I, and in the past, I've played the older version and I got kind of poo pooey about it. I think um, I think I started the campaign from the very beginning, or maybe I started the Casserine campaign, which is what this is, and got frustrated with the whole uh, segment of, the, of the, the, the maps over here where I felt like I was second guessing myself because as a solo experience, it wasn't very much uh, fun uh, because everything's so close and uh, it's easy to, do that second guessing thing. And when I set up over here with uh, DAC or 10th Panzer and the DAC guys, I, I made a mistake and didn't realize that I could have, uh, could have set up one hex closer, which makes a huge difference, totally changes the game, right? So it was, it was uh, it, that's been bugging me. And then I played a couple of turns with uh, another vlogger and we, you know, we, I was doing that as a learning exercise and I didn't really get as much out of it as I hoped to, uh, which was disappointing. And the game was over in two turns, <laughs> yeah, which is really awesome. But uh, in this scenario, the Casserine scenario, the Americans go first. And if you're aggressive, you can just, you know, let me just adjust the camera. And, and so <laughs> one, of the, one of the reasons why this is up here is so that I could take my time with this, goof around, and explore a little bit and maybe reset as I needed to. But uh, the magnet construction issues and some of the, uh, the magnets breaking and all the rest of it uh, probably wasn't well thought through. OCS is probably not a great title to do magnets with because you're constantly swapping in and out the the supply tokens and things like that, swapping T's, right? So uh, bad choice by me. So overall, just really freaking bad idea to put this on the magnet wall, wrong game. Um, as an aggressive allied player, you can take uh, these the French Moroccan division, the red stripe, I don't know if you can see it here, and I, let me see if I can zoom in a little bit for you. No, I've, got, I've, got, I've got you on the big, tripod so we got to kind of take it in stages so it's a little bit of a goof so we've got this <coughs> uh, Moroccan division here and first uh, elements of first armored and there's some guys from 34th infantry here and it, you you can as I experienced firsthand end up at the end of turn two being as the allied player right here in Suse, you take Suse or Sus if depending on what freaking continent you're from or some other variation on pronouncing that word that's the last uh, trace supply location and if you are familiar with OCS you know that it's all about trace supply for all of the units south of there which includes all those guys over there on the right, waiting for Montgomery to arrive. Take that, all these guys are out of supply, basically. And if they're not out of supply, they're chewing up uh, on map supply, which means there is no German uh, counteroffensive, and you go massively off the rails historically. Now, it's interesting that that's how the scenario is structured. Uh, and, it, and the, the rationale is that if you let the 
Germans go first, they will have unbridled success. And I don't know really what that means. I, and, and that's my word, but I don't know what it means in terms of the game and, and how far do they get in two turns. So the sources of supply for, um, here we go, for the Allies down here, uh, area A, bone, I think it can be also be a trace supply location. And then of course, top right hand side once the, once the uh, Brits arrive, right? So I don't know how far they can get. I, th I imagine that they could get to Terbesa here and take out this big supply dump that's here and do some damage to sort of isolate a lot of the American army. So it's a bit of a challenge to me to understand why, why we don't let the, the Germans go first in this scenario anyway, given that it's a fragile force. You know, 10th Panzer is not the 10th Panzer from the early days, and nor is 21st Panzer. It's not a fully stocked unit. It doesn't have everything. Over here on the right side of the map, you've got some Italians and you've got 15th Panzer as well. And contextually, if we put it all in, in perspective, the, the Americans had just tried under, I forget the guy's name, it started with an F, but the general uh, wanted to take this uh, pass here, starts, and the pass, no, the pass starts with an F, maybe. Maybe they both start with an F. Anyway, this pass here, uh, there was an assault with a combined French-American force. I think I'm pointing off camera. Zoom in here a little bit, do this. And it's not a great angle. I'm sorry about the light, guys. I'm trying to see if I can do some adjustments. How's that? Uh, there was an attack here. It, it basically failed. Uh, I, I think at one point the, the, uh, the Americans started to dig in here, but then were, were kicked out. And then in, in uh, Gafsa, the, the, the Americans uh, moved some of First Armoured down here on the, whoops, and now I'm, now I'm, now I'm over, uh, over here. Uh, moved in, took this town, heavy fighting. Both locations saw heavy losses in the order of 500 to 1,200 uh, casualties. Lots and lots of tanks destroyed. So the Americans were kind of scattered all over the place and Eisenhower and the uh, French and uh, the, uh, the general was in command at the time in this location, the American general had forces scattered all over the place and they weren't really in a position to be offensive. Uh, they weren't gonna move and, and attack aggressively. So having that sort of frame of reference this, this whole sort of ahistorical push through this very weak, uh, it's called the super division here. I'm sure that stands for something. Super, I've got the list over here, I can look it up. But um, you can bust through this or isolate it and uh, choke it out and then get to here in turn two, up to Suse in turn two. So really a problem. Uh, trying to balance this out for myself. Um, the, 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 the Allies wanted to cut through and reach Sfax or Sfax here or Garbs, uh, Garbase, Garbase here, sorry for butchering the words, and, and cut the German army in two because we've got all these other forces over here covering Bizette and Tunis and whatnot. So, it's a, uh, it's a really tricky little situation to try and understand how, how best to, pardon me, how best to adjust the scenario to reflect some of that versus what I feel like is kind of a, oh, here's a starting point for the Catherine campaign and go ha have fun with it. Uh, I'm sure this must have come up in Play testing where you know a combined uh, crappy first first armored and crappy Moroccan division take out crappy Italian units, put
put these guys out of supply. I'm sure with the hyper-aggressive OCS plays that are around, that must have been gamed out in some way, shape, or form and seen as a potential problem. So all that freaking 10-minute preamble to say that the way I'm playing this, I am going to let the Americans go first. I am not going to let the Americans pass this line here for the first turn or two turns, depending on how things evolve. And should uh, Suse fall here, <coughs> the Axis will have either Gabes or Sfax uh, for a couple of turns as a trace supply route to really make sure that if, if there's some form of offensive that goes on from the Allies, that it's substantive and not some bullshit roll in roll a few units in, kill a truck, take some SP, and uh, say bygones, and then we've, we've spent hours setting a game up, playing, doing stuff, and it's over in, in three turns. What we want to do is have a, a learning experience. Unfortunately, um, I'll be playing it solo and not against someone, so I won't be uh, garnering the benefit of their experiences or their strategies or their tactics. It'll just be my strategy and tactics against myself but that seems to be the only way that I get to really have any uh, seasoned OCS gameplay at the moment I haven't found uh, an opponent that I can play with that is happy to uh, you know make adjustments and, and offer advice and opinion on on the choices in gameplay you know you know pseudo live environment so it's it's a little uh, i'm hoping to find someone to play with so i can learn more about you know how to optimize my optimize my play with this great game system so what happened uh i've moved the the allies up uh for in this uh, around this area here can you see that yeah so right here i've got uh 34th infantry and first armored i spread them out a little bit i tried to block uh, this pass here, as it slow down, I put 2-1 uh, from 1st uh, Armoured, but there's a, a tank battalion here, 34th Infantry Regiment, and there's a, uh, I think there's a AT unit underneath there, 3-1 uh, from 1st Armoured is here, just sitting in some rough terrain, and another unit here, I pushed uh, this light uh, tank, which but basically it's a bunch of crap that will sort of slow down uh, 10th Panzer if they decide to come through and around and do a, a, a end around on uh, First Armored, uh, which is pushed up with Mor with the Moroccans to, you know, you know let's, let's, you know, let's have at it, right? Let's, let's attempt to cut this force in half by all means, but let's not have the game end in two turns. So doing some of that there, pushing forces up through here. So uh, where is, uh, you know, second core uh, HQ is just here at the bottom of the frame. There are ranges and some first armored units as well as basically bits and bobs is what I would call it. There's some uh, French police units and other bits and pieces. And so that's the movement phase of the first turn, Feb uh, 15th. And we'll see what happens from here. Now I've got to decide, do I want to try and run some uh, in this area here? Whoops, excuse me. I've got a little uh, loose. I don't know if you can see or not, but there's a regiment of infantry or mechanized infantry from uh, 10th Panzer. And underneath here, I don't know why I have that guy on top, but let's do that. Uh, I'll show you. I've got a Tiger unit here and a truck, which in actual fact, as a setup, is probably not ideal. It's on the road. Uh, you know, that force is really pretty piss poor there. I might be missing a unit there. I might have to check that. Anyway, I've got this, that really looks skinny. Where is the rest of 10th Panzer? Oh, well, we'll check that in a sec. But 
do I want to drop some air on either of these two to de-G them so that uh, they're disorganized when they begin their activation and that'll slow them down for their potential uh, combats they may want to run or their movement and all that sort of fun stuff. Similarly, but more, uh, uh, more um, difficult and probably less value is doing the same sort of thing over here as well. So, uh, okay, that's, that's kind of a quick uh, update, uh, feedback on the scenario and where we're at and we'll kind of go at it from there and uh, we'll see what happens. I'm gonna go, now I'm, I'm concerned that I haven't got all the 10th Panzer units, but maybe it's right. We'll, we'll check and uh, I'll be back to you in the next, uh, next little bit. Cheers. Stay tuned.